So the unemployment rate in Jamaica is currently at 8%, an all-time low for the nation, I'm told. However, youth advocate Kamisha Kelly believes that some marginalized groups are being left out of the employment pool. She's also, apart from being a youth advocate, she's a UE lecturer, um, and she's here with us. And you'd have seen her in, in other areas also. Morning, great to see you. <laughs> good morning, you good morning, Empress. Uh, good morning. <laughs> You lecture what at the university? So I lecture in the Department of Government. I teach Introduction to International Relations, Political Marketing and Communication, and Good Governance and Global Corruption. In other words, you're bright. Uh, no. Yes. I'm curious. <laughs> and I research. <laughs> what, I should ask, what we should ask her before we start is, um, what is your opinion on the current stuff? Bunting <laughs> Peter no, we're not, we're versus right, Phyllis right, Peter. Right. When first, we talk about political marketing. <laughs> first thing, they... The, the, the fact that the unemployment rate is where it is, is yeah. a good thing. It That's is first a fantastic thing. thing. When we think of where youth unemployment is coming from to where we are now, it is something to be celebrated. Yep. And at the end of the day, any progress should be recognized and celebrated. But when you see that it's not the entirety of the labor market that we're concerned about, you know, we have to look at the youth unemployment rate. These are the persons who, they, some of them have left high school, some of them have left university, and still they're unable to find jobs, or some of them are what we call underemployed. Why do you use the word marginalized? Um, I think that term was not a quote from me. Okay. Um, that, what, what I believe is that there are many young people who are left out of the labor market for various reasons. At the end of the day, it could be a factor of um, education not adequately preparing young persons to transition into tertiary and therefore not being able to upskill. Some persons not tapping into the skills training that is available to allow them to be able to find decent work. And see, all of this conversation that I was having was a part of the decent work agenda and looking at the importance of the training tripartite partnership. So between the young people themselves who have something to take to the market by virtue of their sheer volume, the, the number of young people that exist in the labor market, but also the role of government, so what policy must do, whether it's education, training, employment, but we must also look at the role of the private sector organizations and the educational institutions. Private, there must be some connection, some bridging between all of those parties that allow, allow them to work seamlessly to facilitate a more seamless transition of young people from education and training into employment. It can't be that we're only expecting the government to solve this problem of youth unemployment without the requisite job creation coming from private sector, without the requisite um, experiences in training, on the job training for young people. And a lot of that has to be provided by our yep. private sector. I, I want to come in, Kamisha. Mm -hmm. I admire you, by the way. <laughs> Thank She's you, so Empress. eloquent, so beautiful. <laughs> um, let's let, let, let's woo, pull up a minute. Yeah. And let's now look at what constitutes a youth market. Mm -hmm. All right, how many young people are we talking about? And tell us the demographic, the age group, mm -hmm. all of that. What are we saying when we say youth? When we think of youth, we're thinking of those who are 18 to 30. Mm -hmm. well, I think 18 to 29. So right. on Saturday, I'm sorry, I'm out of the youth market. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Lord, lady. Saturday. I feel you. I've been there. <laughs> so that is what we think okay. about traditionally. 18 to 30. 18 to 30. How, but how in many... Jamaica, we know mm -hmm. that you can actually start working before that. Yes. At 16. Mm -hmm. Of course. And, and how many young people are unemployed? I don't want the percentage because that confuses us all. The numbers, if, how many young people are there? The numbers, I can't exactly remember mm -hmm. right now. But at the end of the day, when you think of the percentage of the youth cohort, where the youth cohort actually makes up the majority of the Jamaican population right ah. now, when you think of the sheer numbers, it is a large it number. It is a of large the population. number. When we're looking at males and, and females, what's the comparison? Are females more employed or are males, males more employed? Males are more employed. Really? Yes. Males are more you employed. Know, so, the, the, the per, so, so put another way and put yeah. the more appropriate way. Mm -hmm. The percentage of young women mm -hmm. who are unemployed is higher than the percentage of young men who are yeah. Mm. I've, I've been hearing for a, for a while, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not even saying I'm, I'm disagreeing. Mm -hmm. So I want to be a fireman for want of a, um, a, a better profession. Mm -hmm. But I'm told, so, well, maybe you shouldn't go there because it, that's not where the, the openings mm -hmm. are. The so maybe yeah. you should turn something else. Mm -hmm. But my passion mm -hmm. is to be a fireman. <laughs> If you understand my point. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a suggestion is, all right, if what you really want, mm -hmm. 
don't bother with that because there, is, there are no jobs out there for that type of person. Mm -hmm. Does that not hurt my whole um, passion for what I want to do and stuff? Certainly it can. And certainly anyone who is saying that that's not where jobs are should have some data to support that. Right. And this again is why I call on the greater partnership between the institutions, the government and the employers in the private sector. Where is the labor market data? The PIOJ has a lot of that because they have been talking to industry players. So the pulling together of all these players in a seamless or regular partnership and meeting to create opportunities is extremely important. So yes, I believe that you can't just look at what your passions are. You must be looking at the data to see, okay, where are the opportunities? Where are the growth industries in Jamaica? Right. And interestingly, the growth industries in Jamaica right now, one of them, one of the prime ones BPO? is in tourism. Because all I'm BPO hearing is BPO, BPO. BPO. And I, I have some... But which is my point, though. You, you're actually saying what I... You're actually answering my question yes. the same way. I yes. Do. You have to look at what are the growth industries. The truth of the matter is that the nature of work, the nature of employment is changing significantly. Of course. And many people not always be, be able to find something that is just what I want to do. Is it what you want to do and are you able to create the space mm -hmm. to successfully succeed in that? Uh, there are a couple things I have to bring up, um, mm -hmm. Kamisha, which I'm really not hearing at the moment is... What is the role of young people? Mm -hmm. You see, when you're pushed up mm -hmm. against the wall, yeah. at some point you need to stand up, demand what you want, and mm -hmm. create that. Mm -hmm. Create that work. Create that export. Mm -hmm. Look at the relationship with different countries. Where do we, the youth, stand up and say, listen to me, government, this is what we want you to do. Mm -hmm. Private sector, we need you to do this. Not only that, what are we going to do as a collective unit? Now, 18 to 30, a lot of young people could sit down in a room together outside of private sector, yeah. outside of government, yeah. and come up with a plan. Now, what that, is where, that is where the, the conversation about what youth have to offer is important. Mm -hmm. And I remember sharing in that same forum, when I sat on the Partnership Council for Jamaica, one of the questions that was asked at the time is, what do youth have to contribute that would necessitate them having a seat at this table? Mm. And when we look at it, we are the bulk of the people that are now offering labor, yes. right? And so we must have this conversation as young people through the number of youth organizations that exist about what labor looks like. In addition to that, one of the most important things that I raise in the conversation is that labor is no longer for young people coming with the kinds of social protection, in many cases, because mm. it's contract work, yes. they're not getting health insurance they're yeah. not getting pensions that's okay because you can create Those your are own things that you have to yeah. consider right. as well and, how and we can create our people. own health insurance mm -hmm. we, yeah. we can do it with how the market is going yeah. but, but we, we have must to say have the conversation. that things are happening from private sector you have yeah. neo jamaica you have the hope program from the government you have the advanced program of fhi 360 that's looking at a number of things to to create labor bridging strategies right. what about and the factories important. corporation of jamaica i've been seeing that on the, the tv is that going to be creating more work well, I can't say. Have it's you not been seeing it? I've, see, I've been seeing a bit of information, but I'd have to look some more on that to be able Kamisha, to speak you're the it. only person that comes here and can talk more than me. <laughs> <laughs> I've <laughs> never seen this in my life. You're a lecturer, a <laughs> youth advocate, Kamisha Kelly. Thank you very much.